Formative assessment is an important part of an educator's day. Checking for understanding can be easier, more efficient, and give you a fuller picture of student understanding with digital tools. Hello there. If we haven't met before, my name is Monica Burns. I'm an ed tech and curriculum consultant, the host of the Easy Ed Tech podcast, and the voice behind the blog, Class techtips.com. I'm excited to join you today to unpack this ed tech concept. Let's go ahead and dive in. Formative assessment is not something new and it's not novel to conversations around using digital tools either. There are lots of ways to check for understanding and giving kids an opportunity to share their learning with technology can allow you to collect information more quickly. So finding out from students where they're at or where they need support in real time. And it's also an opportunity to give kids more ways to respond or multiple ways to share with you where they might need some extra support. So let's take a look at some online resources, some strategies for collecting information from students in real time so that you can react and pivot your instruction right away related to that data you've collected from students. And let's take a look at some tools that give kids more than one way, some choice in how they're going to respond to a question or a prompt that they've been given. So when you arrive here at Flipgrid's landing page, I'm right here at flipgrid.com, you'll see a space where you can launch an opportunity for kids to share their learning and you can check for understanding in a few different ways. Now, if you haven't used this before, you'll head to educator sign up. If you are participating as a student, they would pop in this code right here on Flipgrid's landing page or use the direct link you've shared with them. I'm already logged in here in this window and you can see there are a few things at the top of my screen. Groups, discovery, and shorts. Now for this conversation on checking for understanding, you're most likely going to set up a group and then have topics where kids will respond. So to set up a group, you'll go ahead and change up the theme, name your group, and decide how you want to invite members to join in. If you're already using Google Classroom, it makes it really easy to onboard a whole group. But of course, you can set it up with student usernames or where everyone comes in from the same domain, meaning the email address that everyone uses within your community. Once you've got this set up, you can go ahead and create a group. Now I'm gonna come back out here to where I've already got a group already for us, and I'm going to open this up here. Now you can see here that in this area, I've set up a space where participants can give a hello I am introduction, but then there are some formative assessment opportunities, including a space for an article reflection, or of course, whatever it is that you're checking for understanding on. So you'll want to go to the plus sign to add a new topic. And this is where you're taking your traditional check for understanding. Maybe it's an exit ticket at the end of a lesson and you're giving students a few new different ways to respond. So you might put in something very general like exit ticket for today, or you might put in a space for kids to add any questions that they have, whatever your success criteria is, whatever prompt you want to use, uh, you can add it here in this space. So for us today in this quick demo, I'm going to type in a title and then a description. As you can see here, I added a quick title and a description or prompt for students. We're pretending that this is a exit ticket after a lesson on abiotic and biotic factors of an ecosystem. Once you have your prompt or question right here, you can add in any additional links, you can format the text, and you can make a few more decisions. This could include adding an image or recording your own video to add to this a prompt for students or even adding attachments maybe an article or a video you want students to review 
You can then decide how long it is that you want them to speak for. Maybe it's just a minute or a quick 30 second response and then they can save to group. You would then copy this topic a link so you could share this whole link with students. You could grab it as a QR code, post it directly in Google Classroom or Teams, totally up to you. When students go ahead and view this, so we'll go into member view, uh, they'll be able to tap on this button and add a video response, whether they're on camera or off camera, and adding in any extras like text to their screen, totally up to you. When they come back here to this page, you can see I've got one reflection example uh, right here. You can watch any of the videos, anything that they've added to your Flipgrid response area. So we just took a look at Flipgrid together. It is a dynamic tool and one that is high on my list when conversations around formative assessment. Let's now jump over to Mentimeter. This is a tool that gives a full picture for a whole class or a small group as opposed to one-on-one -on -one updates. Now there's lots of benefits for using a tool like this to get a read of the room, but I want to dive in so that you can get a feel for the choices you can make to set up students in a way where they can respond quickly and easily and you can then make a judgment call on what happens next in a lesson. So I'm here at mentimeter.com. I'm already logged in, so I can go ahead and tap on this My Presentations, and it'll bring me over to this page where you can see I've used this tool a lot. Just like Flipgrid, it is completely free and lends itself well for quick, check for understandings. Now Flipgrid connects the student response to the student. They log in and you know exactly who posts it, whether or not they jump on video for their response. Mentimeter gives you more of a read of the room and falls into our polling category or more anonymous responses. This type of formative assessment data is definitely useful because it gives you a picture of where everyone is at. Of course, you may want to follow up with more specific individual responses, but this is a great way to kick off a lesson to check for understanding or get a read for the room at the end of a lesson. Now I've used this a few different times, which might be an understatement, but I'm gonna go here to new presentation and we're just gonna make a quick demo presentation for today. Now it's up to you how you might pose a question to students and what questions you might ask them. Let's take a look at a few of the popular question types that you can pick and choose from. The first one is multiple choice. This type of question is really useful if you want students to pick just one thing and give their response. You don't have to mark anything right or wrong. It gives you a few different options for layouts so you can see the results in different ways as well. Great for a math a class connection. You might decide to try a word cloud instead. As you can see from when I hovered over this example, a word cloud goes along with a prompt and students respond with one, two, three, or just a couple words as their responses. The more frequent a response shows up by everyone who is participating in the class, the larger the word cloud will get. There's also the option for open-ended questions, scales, ranking, and even a Q&A. These are all great types of questions that you can share with students to get a read of the room. When you are ready to share, you'll find a link, a code, and a QR code uh, to give them so that they can participate. You can then view all of their results in real time or set it up so they've got a few days to respond if you're working in an asynchronous model. 
checking for understanding is an essential part of an educator's routines to make sure that all students are where they need to be to get a full picture of what kids need in order to be successful. As you check for understanding in digital environments, giving kids multiple ways to respond, creating routines where kids can give an update or share where they're at is important. And digital tools can give kids more choice as well as more frequency in ways that they can give you an update and share their learning.